I'm Joe Merrick and uh, this is day two of PlayStation Access's coverage of E3 2012. Today we've got a couple of big games lined up to look at, including Call of Duty Black Ops 2, we're going to the Sega booth to check out Aliens, Colonial Marines, and through contractual obligations, I also need to look at PES and FIFA, even though I'm a wee bit pissed at football games. Let's have a wee Sammy Shrift today. That big guy up there can only mean one thing. We're at the Sega stand where we're going to check out Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transform and Aliens Colonial Marines. So, what are you showing off that's new in Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing Transform this year at E3? Uh, well, the, the new content for, for now is uh, the Golden Axe track. Um, which we hadn't shown to people before. The kind of key hook of that is that you're racing on lava uh, and there's a volcano kind of in the distance which is slowly erupting as the, as the track progresses. So it's a really kind of dynamic and, um, and a very dark track compared to some of the other um, ones that we've, uh, that we've shown. Yeah, Sonic is getting on a bit, he's over 20 years old, but and yet he's still a fan favourite. What yeah. do you think is the secret behind Sonic's success? Why is he still so popular? It's, it's just the character design. It's just a, a, a brilliant piece of character design, really iconic. You can tell by the fact that it's, it's hardly changed over the years, right? Okay, we're here to have a chat about one of the biggest games of the show. It's this Alien Colonial Marines. Uh, so, what are you showing off at E3 this year from the game? Uh, this year we got hands-on with the multiplayer. Six on six, uh, aliens versus uh, uh, the, the Marines. Are you guys big Aliens fans yourselves then? Oh god, yeah. You know, it's like, I'm a huge Aliens nerd, you know, myself, absolutely. And getting to work on this is amazing. Do you get to play as a Xenomorph in the game as well? Uh, not in the single player, not, not in the narrative campaign, but in the multiplayer you do, which is, you know, it's, it's been pretty awesome. I mean, it's, it's really fun, you know, you guys should try it if you get a chance. Right, let's try a bit of imagination here, right? See if you had one of the motion sensors, right, and it looked like there's a bunch of Xenomorphs about to attack the E3 conference center right now, what would your survival strategy be? <laughs> um, I would take up a good position, I would try to push them back with the, the pulse rifle or the grenade launcher, underbarrel grenade launcher particularly, um, and try to get into a good position where I could defend against. Uh, see me, I'm a bit more sneaky. I would hide behind that there. Because <laughs> then I, they would think oh, that yeah. would be one of them, yeah, so yeah, yeah. you know that'd be that's my... Not, that's not bad. Yeah. That's not bad. See, I, I'm always thinking. Yeah. Okay, we are currently creating a health and safety hazard behind closed doors at the Activision stand, where we're going to be talking to David Anthony, one of the developers of only the biggest game there is at the show, Call of Duty Black Ops 2. One of the things that the community were up in arms about, they, did, they just had, had to respond with this. Obviously they're all Black Ops fans, and they all want to know, are there going to be zombies in Black Ops 2? <laughs> uh, well, let me tell you that uh, I can confirm that zombies are coming back. Right, yes. And, uh, I, back. They are, and they're coming back bigger than ever before. Cool, so what kind of new games are we going to play with the zombies this time? You're going to be given new game modes. So you're going to be able to play zombies in ways that you've never played it before. And there's going to be the opportunity to play with up to eight people. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Four versus four. Yeah. And we had a suggestion for a zombie game mode from one of our community members. I wonder if maybe you got some comments on it. Capture the zombie. <laughs> capture the zombie. I, I'm not going anywhere near a zombie, dude, if you want me to capture one of those <laughs> things. <laughs> it's a game mode for you. You, know, you have to capture the other team zombie, take it back to your own zombie. I don't know what happens after that, but that was... <laughs> I wouldn't want to be the guy doing that, let's put it like that, but it could be a cool mode. <laughs> Personally, if I see a zombie, I'm going to take him out and blow his head off. So, we are at the Namco Bandai stand and we're going to have a wee chat with Katsu Harada about the new Tekken game. We're also going to have a wee shot at Nino Kuni, which is a game that I am dying to play, simply because it looks like the most beautiful thing that humanity has ever created. We're also going to have a look at the brand new Star Trek game. And you never know, I might get a chance to sit in Captain Kirk's chair. Looking forward to that one. Hi, uh, my name is Katsuhiro Harada, uh, Tekken Series Director. You're watching Access TV. So is there. 
What hobby would I have if I was a fighting character? Well, you know, I have many hobbies. Yacht racing, diving, building PCs. But I guess if I were a game character and I had to pick one, it would have to be traveling the world and trying all the various types of alcohol they have in different countries. Now that there behind me, in case you couldn't tell, is the Konami stand. We're now about to conduct a first for video game journalism by being a Scottish guy asking a Japanese development team about England's chances in Euro 2012 games. Now, we have to ask, uh, do you have any predictions for England's uh, fate in their three group stages against France, Sweden and Ukraine in the coming Euro 2012 games? France is France is 3-1. Sweden 1-0. Ukraina, eh, 2-0. Those are some extremely diplomatic answers there. <laughs> like, and finally, uh, who, who's your money on for the top scorer of the Euro 2012 games? Top scorer is Wayne Rudy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about you, but those scores sound a bit dodgy to me. I'm not sure about their knowledge of football, but they definitely got the coolest business cards. Let me show you them. Look, we've got Barcelona, Inter Milan, and even one that makes me think of my home in Scotland, Celtic. And now the other side of the coin. I'm here to have a wee shot of FIFA 13 and also chat to David Rutter about how the game's coming along. It's pretty special. We've probably got the biggest booth here on uh, at E3 based on, you know, just interest from North America. We've got loads of uh, Latin American people here too. And I think, uh, you know, footy is a sport in, in the North American market anyways, you know, getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I think the fact that the game's so good, uh, it's starting to appeal to people just purely on its kind of Metacritic rating. It gets a buzz around that. But, I mean, you've seen it. You sat in the presentation. You know, how many footy fans are in the room? All the hands up. I mean, it's a, it's a global sport. I think it's a global game that we're making and uh, people seem to love it, thankfully. Cool. And uh, one last question. Uh, can you confirm, will there be downloadable content where you get to relive Commander's glorious moment when we win the 1997 Scottish Cup? Uh, so we, we tend to make things that are really popular and uh, I'm not entirely sure that would be. <laughs> Listen, thanks pretty much for your time. You've been Cheers, brilliant. No Thank worries. you. Anytime. Okay, just had a wee shot of Hitman Absolution there. Now, I don't know what my plan of attack here was, but I, I think, basically, my plan was just to walk around Chinatown with a bottle in my hand, ready to smash somebody over the face with it. Of course, as soon as I did, police came chasing after me. I tried hiding in a dumpster, but they just wouldn't go away. But it's clear just from the, kind of, the wee shot I just had there, this is safe enough to a really special game, and I really enjoyed it, despite the fact I was pish at it. Now, Agent 47 is one of the most iconic characters in games nowadays, uh, and one of the things that makes him iconic is the barcode in the back of his head. Now, we were wondering, if we were to take him down to Tesco or another supermarket, how much do you think he would come up as? How much do you think he'd be worth? <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know, like 99 cents or something. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. There was this big story last year, right, you know, with the, the what's called the, the dildo bag. <laughs> no, what's this? <laughs> do you want to tell us? On Amazon. <laughs> On the unveiling of the game, we had this uh, this story creep up when someone actually scanned this barcode. It, it turned out it was a product on Amazon. There was some kind of uh, double dong dildo <laughs> bag or something like that. It was very very weird, but I mean, somehow fitting, I guess, for a game like Hitman, which it, there is so much kind of craziness and and dark humor in it. So it's better than it's being like a, a killer of onions or something like that. So. <laughs> Well, I'm not sure where to go from there. I think that sounds. Uh, there we go. Thanks very much. <laughs> Thank you. Well, that's the end of a packed day two at E3. I got to check out the biggest game in the show, Call of Duty Black Ops 2. I also got to see the latest chapter in the fierce rivalry between FIFA and Pro Ev. Join me tomorrow for what is my last day at E3. I'm sure it'll be special. See you then.